okay, hi, so two things that you can change the entire world with. That seems like a kind of grandiose claim, but I want to promise you that by the end of this 18 minutes, I will have told you the two things with which you can change the entire world. The other thing that I want to tell you right now is that, yes, that is a PowerPoint slide, and normally I do not do PowerPoints. I, I engage the audience through sheer force of personality. But I was asked to do this PowerPoint, and I said, okay, I'll do that. You know what I'm going to do? A Prezi, because, you know, whoosh, whoosh, that's going to be fun, a Prezi. And then I thought, I'm the first person after lunch. Everybody's going to throw up. So <laughs> this is a PowerPoint, and um, like I said, I don't usually do things like that. But what I do commonly is I bring souvenirs. And this is a thing that I do genuinely own. What it is is the top of a water, it's a, it's a valve cover from the city of Raleigh. And I got that valve cover because one day I spent most of a day watching a crew dig a hole in the ground, put a valve in a 12-inch water main, that's a big thing, without turning off the water. I want you to think about that, whether you could do that in your own house, probably not. And I watched it, and for hours I was watching and watching, and you know, I'm a journalist, so, whoa, what are you doing? You know, that's my job. <laughs> and so, on and on and on, I'm watching the whole thing, and as they're finishing up and they're putting on this new valve cover, the guy running the, running the site said to me, well, you know, that old valve cover, we're just going to take, we're going to throw it in the yard, it's going to sit around and rust. Do you, do you think you, you know, want it? And I was like... Yeah, yeah, it weighs 30 pounds and I'm tearing it over to the car. So you know now, all you need to know about me is that given the opportunity to own a valve cover, I thought that would be a good thing to own. And the point is that I'm interested in that stuff. That stuff is cool, those systems, those, you know, you get fresh water in your house every day, right? Just uh, like we were talking about in the morning. You turn on a faucet and you get fresh, clean water every single time. And the next time you get a waterborne illness will be the first time in your life, and not just of your life, but of every single person you know. How, that's a miracle. That is this everyday miracle. And the conclusion is that stuff is worth paying attention to. I realized that that was really worth paying attention to when I've spent, I've spent like the last several years paying attention to it, but I realized it was worth paying attention to it when we kind of ran out. Um, the city of Raleigh, where I live, Raleigh, North Carolina, w had a drought of biblical proportions. We, it stopped raining one day in March, and then it was just done. The, the, the reservoir, that's our reservoir there on the, la on the right, that's, there was no water. We were running out, and we were really beginning to wonder what it was going to be like if we were getting our water from nice, shiny silver tanker trucks rather than from faucets. The city council was extremely, extremely late to the party in terms of getting people to stop watering their lawns and turning off their, you know, not washing their cars and all this stuff that we do that kind of wastes water. And then finally deep into the throes of this biblical drought, they did an amazing thing. They strode manfully forward and they banned garbage disposals. This is seriously what they did. And now the amazing thing is it's, they did it not because it was going to solve the drought, but because they were having so many sewer overflows and sewers overflow when fat builds up, grease builds up in the sewer and the grease gets in there because people have garbage disposals and they don't just put the broccoli down there, they put the bacon too and so the grease builds up. So it actually turns out that not using garbage disposals is a pretty good idea. Um, really, it is a good idea. If you look at it, there's five different infrastructure systems that a garbage disposal wastes. It just, it's just an absolute waste of five different infrastructure systems. I like to say to people that a garbage disposal is a lose, 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 lose proposition. But, and you should know that though the sanitary sewer people are in complete agreement uh, uh, on this with me, there are some people who not everybody believes that garbage disposals are bad. Um, and they really, and there's, there's a small point, there's certain things that at certain kind of digestion in a water treatment plant, uh, a wastewater treatment plant, you can get power out of the food and stuff like that, but 
universally, the people who manage the pipes don't like your food down in there. But those people at Incinerator do not agree with that. They also felt kind of badly about me personally um, when I started to make the point that garbage disposals are a bad thing. I heard a lot from them. But they were not the only people who were angry when garbage disposals were taken away. The people of the city of Raleigh um, very much responded as Americans tend to respond when faced with any kind of inconvenience. Um, death before inconvenience, that, right? That's our, that's our motto as Americans. And they even said, as you might have expected, that they would say, they said that. They honestly said that. You saw a lot of that. So, I realized that it was time to wake people up. That's an actual screen capture. That, I, that it was time to wake people up to these daily quotidian miracles that we utterly ignore. We know nothing about them. And so, the first thing that we should do is we need to recognize those miracles. We need to recognize those, sim those systems that are doing stuff for us. So, that's what I did. We don't have the vaguest idea of those systems and what's going on. And I spent four years documenting them. I've spent the last four years of my life sailing around in those systems, walking around under cities and going to nuclear power plants and doing all this kind of stuff. And it's an amazing thing because you, it's a new way of looking at the world, which I learned once when I did a story about architecture when I lived in Philadelphia, and this great architect named Charlie Daggett said, wherever you are, stop and look. Look in this room. How many lights do they have along there? How bright are those spots? How wide is the stage? How wide is the seat? How wide is an average American butt? How many steps does it take you to get up from the top to the bottom? Nobody just, a, a, a contractor didn't just pull up and say, I got about a thousand seats, is blue okay? No, they thought it through. <laughs> Every single thing somebody thought about. And all these systems that we have, it's the same thing. You can understand them. You truly can understand them. And one of the most amazing things that I ever ran across is this. I feel like it's the Dead Sea Scrolls. It's the Rosetta Stone. Everybody has had the experience of coming home from work one day and what do you got? All these hieroglyphics scrawled on your, on your sidewalk or on your road. And they're like, the Egyptians are here. There's a, what's going on? These, this is the, uh, the National Public Works Association puts out a little card that when you're going to dig, somebody comes out and writes down where all of those systems are. Um, red is electricity. Pink is reuse water. Yellow is gas. Orange is communications. It's amazing. It's amazing. You can, you can understand what's happening around you. The universe is whispering its secrets into your ear, but we're not listening because we're too busy poking at our stinking phones. And nobody's paying attention to this amazing world around us. And, you know, the orange lines are telling you how your phone works, for that matter. But the truly, the truly most important thing about those systems that I have learned is that we cannot, whoops, we cannot do without them. Are you prepared to go out and shoot your dinner today? Are you prepared to start treating your water, dig a well, site your, uh, your outhouse so that it's sufficiently downhill and down slope and down hydrological pressure? Um, from your well? Are you? No, of course you're not. None of us are. So when I say we are as children without these services, I'm not kidding you. Without these services, we couldn't eat, drink, or go to the bathroom. We are children without these services. When, when Hurricane Fran hit the city of Raleigh, you saw people just walking around holding cups of coffee out, like holding cups out, hoping someone would just pour coffee in them. They were utterly lost without, you know, without, without, being able, people were boiling water on their grills to make coffee. That was your neighborhood savior. And so the point is, we need these systems. We need them so very, very badly. And we have to be aware of them. And the most important thing that I learned, or one of the most important things that I learned when doing this book, is this. Thank God for the engineers, because we ignore them all day long. Are there engineers here? Are there any engineers here? Can you raise a hand if you're an engineer? Engineers. Engineers, I love you. Please, I love you. Now, also for the engineers, love is an emotion that humans... Okay. That's... 
That's the engineer joke, and everybody loves the engineer joke, but you know who really loves the engineer joke? The spouses of engineers. That's who loves the engineer joke. But the thing is, here's what happens. I go around and I make a presentation like this one, and I'm talking to engineers, and I'm saying these systems are saving our lives and we can't do without them, and they're so important and they're so fabulous and the engineers are great and all this kind of stuff, and I'm seeing shoulders back and I'm seeing chins and noses and everything cheeks and everybody's smiling because they're just so happy that I'm singing their praises. And then I keep talking about these systems and I say, and the best thing about these systems, the best thing about these systems is that they're free. They're all free. <laughs> and then I'm not seeing, hi, then I'm seeing shoulders and I'm seeing, uh, um, whoops, I'm seeing male pattern baldness. <laughs> That's... <laughs> Nobody, no, nobody wants to hear it. Nobody wants to hear it. Government engineers don't want to hear it when you tell them that, that they need to get paid for their work and that these systems are important. It's terrifying what happens. But this all raises a question, and it brings you to two important things. Did I tell you? I am a man of my word. I'm going to tell you these two amazing things now. I spend all this time with engineers, whom I love, and with infrastructure people, people who are designing the systems that take care of us. And I was sitting at, um, we have an intersection in Raleigh called Five Points, and it's like six different streets and buses and cars and pedestrians and lights, and nobody knows whose turn it is. Beep, beep, here I come, you know. And um, the pedestrians are trying to cross, and the ladies with the strollers, you know, push the stroller. You're not going to hit my baby, right? Okay, that's my turn. <laughs> you know, that whole kind of, it's like they, like they do in France, right? And... Um, <laughs> The, the engineer and I are sitting on a bench watching this kind of like, oh, oh, just watching and waiting for the explosion. And I said, Eric, tell me, you have these warring constituencies. How do you solve these problems? You have all these different, you have, how do you plan? How do you figure out what to do when you have all these different things pulling on you? And he said, you know, Scott, two things. When I'm solving an infrastructure problem, there are two things that are never out of my mind. And I'm thinking, Speed versus safety. No, okay, wait, Nate. Convenience, convenience versus um, public rights of... No, wait a minute. Okay. Uh, uh, transit versus pedestrian. No, there's too many of those. Oh, asphalt. No, what is it? What is it, Eric? What are the two things that I never... that you never stop talking about? Money and political will. Those are the two things. That is foundational. That is everything. He said anything. There this is, I've talked to engineers about all of these systems, and I can promise you, there, we face no technological challenges. You want the smart grid? We can have that. Easy. Pony up. You want, okay, we have this great water system. We're watching it fall apart, but we have it. But now people are worried about estrogen in the water. What are you going to do? Well, you can get rid of that. All you need to do is uh, use a, uh, you know, a, a much more expensive kind of water plant. We can do that. Use a reverse osmosis plant. Where's the dough? So, it's real simple. We have the money. We know where it is. Everybody's seen the graphs. We know where the money is. We have to have the political will to say, if we want these systems, and I've already, I hope, convinced you that we can't live without them. If we want these systems, we're going to have to do something about it. We're going to have to, what's next? That's what we're here to discuss. What's next? What's next is what used to be. What's next is paying taxes that we used to do in this country. And if we don't do it, we're not going to like the result of it. And that means me. I, Scott Hewler, wish I could pay more taxes, okay? I'd also like to have public transportation and things like that. But that's what you get when you pay your taxes. So, in conclusion, I thought that I would strengthen a little bit because you truly can completely control the world. If you have money and political will, you can do anything. As a nation, we have money. You know we have money. We have to have the will to do this. Are we going to continue to watch it? collapse beneath us so that we each have a couple nickels in our pocket or are we going to put those nickels together and create something that our children and our grandchildren are going to be proud of us for creating. In the end, you've got to decide. Thank you. <laughs>